This is Pastor Tim coming to you again from uh, Lomita and Ben United Methodist Churches uh, serving the Central Texas area. Uh, we are proudly United Methodist. Uh, we invite you to come watch our uh, podcast or our worship live at uh, 9 o'clock on uh, Sunday morning. Uh, we invite you to be part of our community, uh, especially if your church has left uh, you and left the United Methodist Church, uh, you can come be part of us. Uh, we have been talking about some of the, the people of the Bible, uh, some of the characters. We've uh, the, the Bible is very much made up of uh, stories uh, that shape us and in, in our memory, collective memory, uh, who we are, and uh, we're people, people, ordinary people like you and me who. Uh, have their ups and downs. Uh, today we're going to talk about Elijah. Elijah, he is uh, the, probably the greatest Hebrew prophet, uh, considered so by uh, most of the theologians and biblical scholars. Um, when uh, Jesus was uh, transfigured, uh, Moses and uh, and Elijah came to be with him. Uh, the law and the prophets, the kind of sum total of. Uh, the Hebrew experience, the Jewish faith. Uh, so Elijah is a good character to remember. He was a uh, prophet. Uh, he was during the time of uh, Queen Jezebel. Uh, Queen Jezebel was uh, the, the wife of the Jewish king and was uh, a Baal worshiper. Uh, she tried to introduce Baal worship to uh, the Jewish people so that they would worship not only Yahweh but also Baal. Uh, the uh, Elijah opposed her in that, and he proposed a, uh, a challenge uh, to see who could light the fire on the altar. Uh, and he had hundreds of uh, prophets of Baal come, uh, and they began to try to uh, pray and, and worship and incant their God to uh, light the fire. Uh, and uh, Elijah was very uh, cocky. He was uh, very confident in himself. He, he told us that maybe they ought to yell louder because maybe Baal was asleep. Um, and so he, they couldn't light the fire. And so when it came his turn, he said, well, let's, let's make it a little harder. Let's throw some water on there. And he repeatedly threw water on the wood uh, and then called down to, to Yahweh, to God, and the, the fire was lit and the prophets of Baal were then uh, executed uh, as being false prophets. Uh, now, he might have expected a, a parade given for him because he was a hero of the faith, uh, but instead Jezebel sent a, a message to him that she was going to send the army and he was going to be dead by nightfall. Uh, he became frightened. He lost all his bravado. He lost his confidence, uh, and he took off running for his life through the desert. And somewhere in the middle of the desert, uh, he decides that uh, he's given up. There's no hope. And so he uh, lays down and says, uh, you know, God, just do me in right now. Uh, but instead, God sends a messenger with food and water uh, that gives him the strength to go on. He ends up at Mount Sinai where Moses had received the Ten Commandments, and he hides in a cave. Uh, he's he's uh, very depressed. He wants to hide from the world. Um, and so he spends the night in the cave, and all, everything seems the darkest uh, during the night. Uh, but in, in the morning, uh, God comes to him and says, Why are you here, Elijah? Uh, I don't think God wanted more information. I think God knew exactly why. He wanted to know what uh, Elijah's response was going to be. And a lot of times God wants to know what our response, he knows what's happened. He wants to know what our response is going to be. And he began to whine about all the things that went wrong and how he was the only one who would remain faithful and everybody else had left the faith, uh, which he's going to discover was not true. Uh, but God doesn't uh, then say, well, it's all right, Elijah. It's going to be all right. He didn't, he didn't try to make him feel better. We have the idea that if we can make somebody feel better, uh, that we've accomplished something. And God doesn't uh, really care about making Elijah feel better. Uh, he doesn't try to fix the problem. He says, uh, go outside. 
And so the Elijah then sees the, the uh, tornado that comes through and breaks rocks. He feels the earth move under his feet in an earthquake. He sees fire from the sky. All signs of what God is, um, that God is present. Uh, but it says in the Bible that God was not in the fire, not in the, the whirlwind, uh, not in the earthquake. Um, that God was in the still, small voice. Elijah had expectations of how God would show up, and, and God uh, changed those expectations and did it in the very ordinariness of silence. Um, and still, uh, Elijah doesn't get it. He, uh, God asks him again, why are you here? And he says, he begins the same kind of rant that he had before saying exactly the same words. He doesn't understand. He's still stuck. Uh, in past hurts and his, his ruined expectations, um, in his uh, disappointment in people, uh, his uh, failures, to, uh, success turned into failure. Um, he's, he's just stuck in the past. He can't let it go. Uh, so God says, I got something for you to do. I want you to go down and get some new leadership. And there's some new, there's some people who have not, their knees have not bent to the, to the, uh, I'll worship of Baal, and they'll be uh, the soldiers for me, and uh, they'll overthrow the, uh, the the worshipers of Baal and establish once more um, the worship of, of God. So Elijah goes and does exactly what he, he does, and he's in the fixing Elisha as his uh, as a successor, who will go at things in a different way. Uh, but it shows that God shows up. God, in unexpected ways, God doesn't always act in the way that we expect or on our timetable, uh, but God shows up and does what is right and is more than enough. Uh, so that's the lesson for today. I hope you uh, will remember that when uh, things are not going your way, when you're disappointed in people, when you've had uh, what should have been successes turn into failures. Uh, remember that, uh, that God shows up in the ordinary stuff of life. Uh, be sure and keep your eyes and ears open for that, that presence of God. Uh, I'll see you next time.